the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the latest cabinet decisions detail preparations to prepare a three-month mini-budget for the country, accounting for the upcoming parliamentary elections. According to the central bank data, amid declining market interest rates and the gradual uptick in the domestic demand, credit growth in the banking sector witnessed a resurgence, particularly in terms of the private sector. Mixed sentiments are observed over at the Colombo Stock Exchange as the indices end up differing from each other. The SPI saw a positive close as S&P SL20 ended down, with the mixed indices expecting to steady throughout the week. And US stocks ended the session higher, with the S&P and the Dow reaching new record closing highs. Shares of Nvidia soared, putting the AI chip leader on the brink of dethroning Apple as the world's most valuable company. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. According to the latest cabinet briefing, Sri Lanka will present a vote on account for three months as there would not be enough time to present a full year budget after elections. Meanwhile, attention was called for the purchase of a debt management software system which is required for the management of public debt in Sri Lanka. Parliamentary elections are scheduled for the 14th of November. Minister Vijay Herat stated that after the elections, the parliament is due to meet on the 21st of November and that there is no time to present a budget for the next year in December itself. So the idea is now to present a vote on account. Sri Lanka usually presents a budget for the following year in November. Sri Lanka is also planning to go to Washington and meet international monetary fund officials late this month and will negotiate tax cuts with the agency in the future. The maintenance of timely, detailed and accurate data on public debt through an appropriate data management system was also explored. Currently, the government employs the Commonwealth Secretariat Debt Recording and Management System provided by the Commonwealth Secretariat to manage and record foreign debt. This system is managed by the Department of Foreign Resources. However, the annual license of this system has been discontinued by the Commonwealth Secretariat, prompting the need for a new solution. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved a proposal to explore the possibility of acquiring the Commonwealth Meridian software for better debt management. Amid declining market interest rates and the gradual uptick in domestic demand, credit growth of the banking sector witnessed a resurgence, particularly in terms of the private sector, while the dependence of state-owned enterprises declined mainly due to the central bank absorbing certain credit facilities of major state-owned enterprise. Profitability of the banking sector also improved, significantly supported by the increase in net interest income, according to the Financial Stability Review 2024 of the Central Bank. Meanwhile, the performance of both the finance companies sector and the insurance sector depicted an overall trend consistent with that of the banking sector, highlighting the impact of improved macrofinancial conditions within the financial sector as a whole. Accordingly, the FC sector also reported an improved performance despite the saturation in vehicle leasing activities. Assets of the sector improved both in terms of quantity and quality, while liquid assets of the sector also recorded a growth with the increased investments in government securities. Meanwhile, similar to the banking sector, reduced interest costs supported profit expansion, while the capital adequacy levels of the sector also improved. Likewise, developments within the insurance sector depicted an improvement during the period, as reflected through the increase in gross written premium. Further, a notable asset growth was observed due to the significant growth in assets of the long-term insurance subsector, with continued increase in investments in government securities. Profitability also improved amidst robust levels of capital adequacy within the insurance industry. Accordingly, the recovery stabilization and gradual growth of the banking, finance companies and insurance sectors were particularly influenced by the developments in the interest rate structure and continued investments in government securities. <laughs> Representatives of the Qatar Sri Lanka Business Council and the Export Development Board of Sri Lanka engaged in discussions on fostering trade relations and exploring investment opportunities between the two countries. At the launching ceremony of the Qatar Sri Lanka Business Council, Ambassador of Sri Lanka to Qatar, Mohammed Mafaz Mohideen, emphasized the importance of strengthening relationships with Sri Lankan institutions and enhancing opportunities for Sri Lankan exporters, including SMEs. He highlighted that these relationships would further strengthen bilateral business ties. During the meeting, President of the Qatar Sri Lanka Business Council, John Prasad, outlined the Council's engagement in key trade sectors, including trade, tourism, hospitality, real estate, manufacturing and services. He also 
stressed the importance of supporting Sri Lankan SMEs by providing networking opportunities and essential business information to help them explore new market opportunities in Qatar. Director General of the Export Development Board, Champika Dharma Sena, reiterated the EDB's commitment to supporting Sri Lankan exporters through various initiatives and noted that the recent collaboration marks another milestone in their efforts, emphasizing that this is the first time the EDB is partnering with Qatar and expressed the board's willingness to work more closely with the QSBC to expand opportunities for Sri Lankan exporters. Key outcomes of the meeting included a mutual agreement to share trade opportunities, connect potential investors and collaborate on upcoming events. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Mixed sentiments are observed over the Colombo Stock Exchange as the indices end up differing from each other. The SPI saw a positive close as the S&P SL20 entered down, with the mixed indices expecting to steady through the week. For more on this, today's trading session we have with us Sajid Nazar from Capital Alliance. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a mixed note, brought on by profit-taking among market participants. The market ended at 12,257.69 points, marking a 11.47 point increase from the previous session, with a turnover of 1.85 billion rupees. The SL20 index, however, experienced a downward movement of 7.77 points to end the day at 3,607 points. A notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers and crossings recorded at Citrus Leisure PLC, John Keels Holdings and Dialogue Asiata PLC. The top five gainers for the day were Industrial Asphalts, Lanka Ventures, Tess Agro PLC, the Lanka Hospitals Corporation and Sri Lanka Telecom PLC. The top five losers for the day were Tess Agro Non-Voting, Satasa Motors, Citrus Leisure, Lake House Printers and Dilma Silon TPLC. Sri Lanka's treasury bill yields were down across maturities with all of a 97 billion rupees of bills sold. Data from debt office showed. For analysis, we have with us Ranjan Ranathunga from First Capital Holdings. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka conducted its third weekly bill auction for the month of October and fully raised the total offered 97 billion rupees. The fully subscription of the today's bill auction marked the fourth consecutive acceptance of the offered maturities, where the Central Bank fully accepted the total offered across all maturities. Moreover, the, the today's auction also marked a significant milestone with weighted average yields uh, declining below the 10% mark across all three maturities. With that, the sharpest reduction was observed on the 91-day bill where the weighted average yield declined by 37 bips to 9.32%, while the 182-day bill recorded the next biggest drop of 30 bips to 9.65%. Meanwhile, continuing on the previous trend, the 364-day bill enticed the lowest decline amongst the short tenors as the weighted average yield declined by 5 bips to 9.95%. Meanwhile, prior to the auction, the secondary market witnessed a slight uptick in yields recording an incline between 10 to 15 BPS. However, post-auction, as weighted average yields declined during the auction, the market became inactive with no trades taking place. The majority of the interest was visible on the billion end of the curve in 2028 and 2029 tenors. Gold prices dip today and the US dollar remains strong, prompting investors to see clarity on the Federal Reserve's potential for further interest rate cuts. Spot gold fell by 0.4% to $2,641.75 per ounce, following a record high of $2,685.42 reached last month. Similarly, U.S. gold futures slipped 0.3% to $2,658.50. The dollar hovered nearly more than two-month peak it reached in the previous session, which has made gold more expensive for holders of other currencies. Additionally, the benchmark 10-year Treasury yield inched higher, 
contributing to the pressure on gold prices. As market participants survey it fresh insights from the Federal Reserve, the interplay between currency strength and interest rates expectations continues to influence the precious metals performance. Oil prices fell sharply in Asian trade today, continuing a recent downturn trend followed by increasing concerns over a potential slowdown in demand. A report indicating that Israel will refrain from attacking Iranian oil facilities further contributed to the decline. Brent crude futures for December dropped 3% to $75.16 a barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures fell 3% to $71.03 a barrel. Prices tumbled approximately 3% yesterday after China, the world's most oil importer, reported its fifth consecutive monthly decline in oil imports, raising fears of weakened demand. These concerns were amplified by the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, which cut its oil demand outlook for the third month in a row. The combination of disappointing signals from China and OPEC's revised forecast weighs heavily on oil prices, highlighting growing anxiety about the global demand landscape. The Sri Lankan rupee has slightly depreciated against the US dollar in commercial banks today compared to yesterday. At Commercial Bank, both the buying and selling rates for the US dollar have risen. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. David Peary's Motor Company Limited achieved a significant milestone in Sri Lanka's automobile industry by producing motorcycles with local value addition under the standard operating procedure introduced by the government and the Ministry of Industry. This was a move which marked a new era for the country's vehicle manufacturing and assembly sector, with DPMC being the first to produce motorcycles locally under the program. In 2022, DPMC unveiled its first motorcycle model, the brand new Bajaj CT100, manufactured locally with components developed and tested within Sri Lanka. Following the success of this, the company released another model, the Bajaj Discover 125, to the Sri Lankan market last year, further strengthening the local motorcycle production efforts. Lakbal De Silva, General Manager of Vehicle Sales at DPMC, expressed his gratitude towards the Minister of Industry and the government for establishing this SOP, stating the standard operating procedure has played a pivotal role in advancing Sri Lanka's automobile industry, allowing customers to purchase purchase brand new vehicles while also fostering local manufacturing. He also hinted at the upcoming launch of the Bajaj Pulsar N160 motorcycle, which will be the next model to be manufactured under the LVA program. This local manufacturing initiative is a significant boost to Sri Lanka's industrial sector as it brings international technology into the country while supporting small and medium-scale industrialists. By using locally manufactured components, DPMC is not only contributing to the growth of the local economy, but also enhancing the skill set of the workforce involved in automobile manufacturing. Both the Bajaj Discover 125 and the CT100 are assembled at DPMC's state-of-the-art manufacturing complex in Run. Hambantra district. The components used in the production are thoroughly tested and approved by Bajaj, the parent company, ensuring that vehicles meet international standards of quality and safety. In a move that promises to reshape Sri Lanka's tourism landscape, John Kiel's group officially launched Cinnamon Life at City of Dreams Sri Lanka, a landmark of $1.2 billion development. Billed as the largest private investment in the country's history, the ambitious project aims to redefine Sri Lanka's tourism landscape, catering to a diverse clientele, creating South Asia's most dynamic destination for business, leisure and entertainment. 
Cinnamon Life City of Dreams Sri Lanka will encompass 687 luxurious rooms and offer multiple entertainment venues, including ballrooms and high-tech event and conference facilities, with the capacity to host over 5,000 guests in multiple locations across its various unique spaces. This makes Cinnamon Life at City of Dreams Sri Lanka the largest event venue in Colombo, setting a new standard for gatherings and hosting international conferences and large-scale events. In addition, the resort's diverse spaces and picturesque settings make it an ideal location for destination weddings and events right in the city, offering a unique blend of modern elegance and local charm for those seeking unforgettable experiences and celebrations. While Cinnamon Life City of Dreams Sri Lanka opens today, the shopping mall and entertainment areas including the gaming facility and the 113 key ultra-luxury newer hotel are scheduled to open in mid-2025, marking the final phase of this landmark project. HMB PLC, a leading private sector bank in Sri Lanka, has strategically partnered with John Kills CG Auto Private Limited to offer innovative leasing solutions for their BYD vehicle range. This collaboration aims to make sustainable transportation more accessible to Sri Lankan consumers, reflecting both companies' commitment to environmental responsibility and innovation. Geared towards making sustainable and cost-effective mobility solutions available for Sri Lanka's population, the MOU commemorating this landmark partnership was signed at the BYD showroom by JKCG Auto in the presence of the HNB Chief Operating Officer Sanjay. Geared towards making sustainable and cost-effective mobility solutions available for Sri Lanka's population, the MOU commemorating this landmark partnership was signed at the BYD showroom by JKCG Auto in the presence of HNB Chief Operating Officer Sanjay Vijayamana, Charita Subasingha, the President of the Retail Sector, John Keels Group, and senior officials from both companies. The partnership offers a comprehensive rental package designed to meet the evolving needs of environmentally conscious consumers. At the heart of this offer are competitive interest rates, which provide financial flexibility during the promotional period, geared towards offering more sustainable transport options to prospective car owners. HNB will provide a range of attractive financing options to meet the diverse needs of its extensive customer base, including attractive published rates for structured leases and enhancing affordability for potential leases. Customers will also have access to exclusive card offers and special discounts on automobile products, servicing, spare parts, tires, batteries and more through the Prestige Prime credit card provided to customers making use of the promotion. Furthermore, HNB General Insurance offers a free life insurance cover valued at 4.5 million rupees and a natural death insurance cover of 600,000 rupees. Aitken's Fence Hotels has made a remarkable impact at the South Asian Travel Awards 2024, securing multiple awards for its exceptional properties in Sri Lanka, the Maldives and India. This impressive performance not only positions Aitken Spence Hotels as a leader in the hospitality industry, but also highlights its unwavering commitment to excellence and innovation. With the highest number of regional awards, the brand underscores its dedication to delivering outstanding experiences that celebrate the rich cultural and natural beauty of each destination. The Your Summer Island Getaway campaign, launched by Aitken Spence Hotel, won gold for Best Promotional Campaign. This campaign, which debuted earlier this year, promoted destinations such as Sri Lanka, the Maldives and India, highlighting their properties as ideal summer destinations. The campaign adopted a multi-channel communications approach targeting travellers from both key and emerging markets. It effectively showcased the unique offerings of each destination and property, emphasising aspects such as culture, adventure, romance, culinary experiences and wildlife. These accolades not only underscore the brand's commitment to excellence in hospitality, but also reflect its dedication to promoting the rich cultural and natural heritage of the region it serves. Aitken Spence Hotel's success at the SATA Awards is a testament to its innovative spirit and ability to adapt to evolving traveller preferences. By prioritising sustainability, community engagement and exceptional service, the brand has positioned itself as a benchmark for quality in the hospitality sector. Sampath Bank PLC proudly announces its participation in a significant financial milestone, contributing to the $750 million senior unsecured syndicate term loan facility for the State Bank of India, facilitated by Mashrek, one of the leading financial institutes in the MENA region. This collaboration highlights Sampath Bank's commitment to supporting strategic international financing initiatives. 
The facility initially launched at $350 million in May of 2024 attracted strong global interest, leading to its upsizing to $750 million. These funds will support the general corporate needs of State Bank of India, the nation's largest financial institution, bolstering its capacity to drive economic growth and stability. Speaking on the decision to participate, Mr. Amal Kirkhena, senior DGM of Corporate Banking from Sampat Bank PLC, stated their involvement in this syndicated loan aligns with strategic objectives to enhance enhance their investment portfolio while securing strong returns. Given the current political climate expectations of credit growth, this three-year loan offers a promising opportunity to lend to a highly reputable institution like the SBI. Mashrek, serving as the sole global coordinator, mandated lead arranger and book runner, played a pivotal role in bringing together leading financial institutions from across the globe. The transaction was also joined by prominent banks, including the Saudi National Bank. Sampath Bank's participation in this landmark transaction exemplifies its proactive approach in seizing opportunities within the international financial landscape, further solidifying its position as a key player in cross-border financing. TWC Capital, a leading corporate advisory firm, today announced the appointment of Rasanja Pereira, CFA, as its new Chief Executive Officer. TWC Capital offers transaction advisory services for mergers and acquisitions, corporate finance advisory for raising equity and debt capital, business valuations and debt restructuring. Rasanja succeeds in this role following a highly successful tenure as Senior Vice President of Investments at TWC, where his strategic leadership and expertise were pivotal in advancing the firm's growth and performance. Rasanja Pereira CFA brings extensive experience of 17 plus years in corporate finance advisory services, having held senior positions across prominent financial institutions prior to joining TWC. His previous roles include corporate finance manager at Global Rubber Industries, associate director at CIMB Investment Bank, and assistant group treasurer at Richard Pierce and Company PLC, where he managed capital raising, investment strategies, and key M&A transactions. Notably, as the head of corporate finance at CIMB, he led high-profile deals such as the TPG Capital's 2013 acquisition of a majority stake in Union Bank of Colombo, demonstrating his experience and expertise in executing complex financial transactions. Going in for a short commercial break, now we'll be right back with Global Updates. This is a Nice Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. More station stocks rose today, buoyed by record highs on Wall Street as the third quarter earnings season approaches. In contrast, Chinese stocks declined amid diminishing optimism from new physical stimulus. Regional markets drew positive momentum from Wall Street, where the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average reached new peaks, driven by gains in financial and technology sectors. U.S. stock index futures showed mild positivity in Asian trading, with attention shifting to a series of important Q3 earnings reports scheduled for this week. However, Chinese markets underperformed their regional counterparts following disappointing inflation and trade data released over the past two days. Although Beijing announced new physical stimulus measures, they provided only temporary support as investors awaited further details that remained unclear. U.S. stocks ended Monday's session higher, with the S&P and the Dow reaching new record closing highs. Shares of Nevada soared, putting the AI chip leader on the brink of dethroning Apple as the world's most valuable company. Monday brought more fresh record closing highs for the Dow and S&P 500 and for shares of NVIDIA, putting the AI chip leader on the brink of dethroning Apple as the world's most valuable company. The Dow gained about half a percent, the S&P gained roughly three quarters of a percent, and the Nasdaq climbed nearly nine-tenths of a percent. An index of semiconductor companies jumped 1.8 percent to a more than two-month high, also aided by a nearly 7 percent gain in shares of ARM holdings. Megacap tech names also jumped, including Alphabet, Microsoft, and Tesla. Movers to the downside included Caterpillar, which dropped 2 percent following a brokerage downgrade. 
and Boeing fell 1.3 percent after the plane maker flagged a larger-than-expected third-quarter loss on Friday. Earnings season heads into full swing this week, with investors also keeping an eye out for crucial economic data, including September retail sales figures. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business globe. I am Sunny Mudan Naika. Thank you for watching. Good night.